All right. Uh, welcome back, everybody. We are going to discuss the last section of Chapter 11, which is called uh, Collides. So first, let's talk about what the Tyndall effect is. This is how you determine if you have a colloidal solution or a true solution. Uh, so the Tyndall effect looks at the scattering of light by particles. In a suspension, the particles are going to be suspended. They're hanging around in the solution. And so when you point a, um, and I love that this is called a torch. When you point a torch through a solution, or you know, through a solution, suspension, whatever, in a suspension, the particles are going to scatter the light. And from the side of the container, um, you'll see the beam of light passing through. In a true solution, the ions and the molecules um, that are dispersed are so small that they won't scatter light, and so you don't really see anything on the side of a true solution, whereas in a suspension, you'll see the beam of light uh, passing through. So here's just another representation. Um, you've got your light source over here, and then true solution, you're not seeing any light passing through. You're not seeing any light from the side. Here the particles are scattering the light, and so you're actually seeing it from the side, and then it's reflecting into a dark background. So this beam is called a Tyndall beam. So let's talk about colloids. Um, there are a suspension of tiny particles in some medium. And this is also known as a colloidal dispersion. There are several types of colloids, and um, they're classified according to the states of the dispersed phase and the dispersing medium. And actually, if you take a look at that table, uh, 11.7 on page 515, Marshmallows are also a colloid, so I thought that was kind of interesting because there is suspension of particles, I suppose. Um, so let's talk about kind of how we make a colloid and, and why they don't go together to form a precipitate. Why do things stay suspended? Well, we can assume that they are neutral. However, when we put them in some sort of an electric field, the particles all migrate to the same electrode. So this tells us that they must all have the same charge, and so if you've got a positive electrode, we've got all the colloids going to it, maybe they all have a negative charge. So this is telling us that they're charged in some way. So when we look at what makes up a colloid, what we see is that the center is either a tiny ionic crystal, a single large molecule, or actually also um, a bunch of tiny molecules. And they will attract this medium layer of ions that are all the same charge, and so um, if we look at, where's the pen? Okay. So if we look at this picture up here, this would be our center. And then we've got this layer of um, ions, and they're all the same charge. And then that layer attracts another layer of oppositely charged ions. So if we were showing this um, zoomed in, like here's our center, then let's say we've got positive ions being attracted to the center. And then those are going to attract negative ions. And so we're forming a center with basically two different layers. Okay, And so we've got this colloid that it has negative charges all the way around it. So since this outer layer all has the same charge, and all the other colloids also have the same charge, they're going to repel each other because negative and negative repels. Um, and so because they won't ever attract, this doesn't form um, particles that are big enough to precipitate. And the fact that they repel each other is called electrostatic repulsion. Okay, so the only way to actually um, destroy a colloid is through coagulation. And there's two, there are two ways to do this. One is by heating. So, you know, when we heat things, the temperature increases, the kinetic energy increases, the particles speed up, and then they collide, and they collide with enough energy to break that ion barrier, and then we've got positive and negative things floating around, and they attract. The other way is by adding an electrolyte, and so this will neutralize the ion layers, and so then things will form precipitate. So two examples of this. Uh, river deltas are where you've got fresh water, and so we've got H2O, and then salt water combining together, and so what happens is the the salt in the ocean mixes with the fresh water that also contains clay um, particles being suspended, 
And this basically is like adding an electrolyte. And so then the clay particles start to precipitate together. And that's why you have these big river deltas uh, like the Mississippi right before it goes into the ocean. Um, in industrial areas, they're also using this process to separate soot from smoke. And so soot are all the particles that are kind of suspended in the smoke. And so they pass them through this um, ion type thing and it collects all the soot and then um, you know lets the smoke go. So it's actually reducing a lot of soot from the, the atmosphere for, for industrial areas. Okay, so that finishes up um, this chapter. So um, I guess the next thing to do is time for tests. Ooh.